Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to take a look at using the Flex modifier to create kind of a liquid special effects, uh, something like uh, a body of water reacting to uh, a pebble or a rock or something being dropped into it. Uh, we're going to use the, we used to have something called Reactor, uh, which uh, was our physics engine uh, that uh, helped us simulate some of this stuff. But uh, since 3D Studio, I, th I think, what is it, 2012, uh, we've we've lost reactor and we've gotten mass effects, which is really great for soft body and hard body uh, dynamics. Uh, but liquids, uh, we kind of had to find a different way of going about it. So uh, I'm going to show you this way, and we're going to take a regular old plane and have it start reacting to another object uh, as if it were the surface of uh, a body of water. So create tab here. Let's go ahead and create. Uh, uh, the surface of our water. I'm going to go ahead and create just a plane. This plane. I'm going to turn off my grid to G to turn that off. Go over to my modify tab and I'll make this uh, dimensions of this plane something around 200 by 200. And uh, I like to come down here to the location and kind of zero everything out by right clicking on these little uh, spinner wheels uh, so that everything is 0, 0, 0, X, Y, Z and it's all right in the center there. Uh, 200 length, 200 width, and we'll go with 20 segments in both length and width as well, and that'll do us just fine. This is going to be the surface of our water. Now we need something to drop through the surface of our water, so we'll make a sphere in this case. Uh, I'll just make a little guy here, and again, I'll kind of zero him out. And uh, rather than uh, zero in our z-axis, let's uh, let's raise him above the plane a little bit, maybe by 80 units here. Uh, above our, our z-axis or along our z-axis. I'll make sure that the radius of this guy is a nice even 10 just so that it's not too big or too small for our little simulation here. That ought to work fine. Uh, and then what we're going to do is animate this guy falling through the surface of our plane. If I go ahead and turn on my auto key here, move my uh, slider to timeline slider to frame 20 here, uh, and then I'm just going to come down here to that z-axis again where I put in that 80 and hit negative 40 uh, which will move our sphere through completely through the surface of our plane. Uh, 20 frames not too bad it's not going to be too violent of a reaction here it's kind of a nice simple uh, falling motion uh, because uh, it's a little stiff looking right now if I go ahead and hit play uh, you'll see that uh, you know, it's, it's a little too restricted in movement, so we can use tangents uh, to make our ball kind of start falling slower and then pick up speed as it, uh, as it, as it finishes. Uh, if I come over here to the keyframe, right click, and we're using the Z position, right? That's where we've animated it along the Z axis, up to down. Uh, and I, I open up that Sphere 1 Z position. This is our, our tangent controls here. And we've got uh, up here to jump back and forth between the two keyframes that we've made. It also tells you what time or what frame number it's at and the current value in the Z position. Uh, for this guy, we need an out tangent. Right now, it's set to, to just the default, uh, I believe, smooth. Uh, we want to go to this guy, this one that looks like a big solid uh, arc there, which is our slow, which means out. As it leaves this keyframe, as it goes heads out away from it, uh, it'll start out slow and gain speed as it goes. Then I can click the little arrow up here to move to our keyframe number two. And this time we want to change how quickly it comes in to the keyframe from the other direction. So we'll change the in tangent there to not the nice arc one, but the inverse of it, which is the fast arc here. We don't need an out because uh, our animation stops there. So uh, there's nothing to uh, change heading on out from here. Once we're done with that, if we go ahead and hit play, Kind of show the, the top viewport here. It starts out slow and falls a little bit more naturally, uh, a little bit more physically accurate. Uh, and that'll, that'll do us good enough for this little demonstration. Uh, with our plane and using the flex modifier, it's going to react to uh, deflectors. So we need to make a deflector and assign our sphere here, uh, the shape of our rock or our pebble or whatever we want to call this to that deflector. So if I go to my Create tab again, all the way over to the Space Warps button, the three little wavy lines, uh, the bacon button there, and we're going to create a specific kind of deflector. 
Uh, we've used some other kinds of deflectors on some of these other tutorials, like uh, just the regular or the sphere deflector. Uh, the U deflector is probably the most or the handiest deflector because it can take on the shape of any object. So in my top view, I'm just going to click, drag, and, and draw out a U deflector. Then we'll go to the Modify tab to adjust its settings. I'm going to put the bounce down to zero. Uh, we're not, we don't need any bounce for this. It just needs to react to something passing through the surface of the water. Uh, and I'm going to click the Pick Object button and then select my sphere to assign that as the item uh, that is our object-based deflector. All right, now we're ready to get to work on making the surface of our plane react like water as this guy passes through it. Right now it passes nice through it, but uh, water would ripple as something passes or breaks through the surface of this thing. So select your plane. Again, back over to the Modify tab. We are going to add a modifier to it. So the modifier drop down here and add the Flex modifier to it. Very, very uh, useful modifier for... Uh, things like secondary motion, secondary animation, uh, getting a little bit of uh, uh, bounce or flexibility into objects. And at its at its uh, most basic, it just might cause something to sway as you moved it really fast, uh, bend just a little bit. Uh, things like uh, pigtails on a little girl would be uh, a little bouncier as she walked, stuff like that. Uh, at its most complex, we can work with things like springs and weights uh, to get uh, reactionary things such as ropes, uh, I've seen it used for uh, the trunk of an elephant or animals' tails, stuff like that. Uh, and today we're going to go with probably one of the most complex movements, which is uh, the surface of a body of liquid. So if we take a look at our settings here, at the very, very top we've got our parameters. Uh, right now it's set at 1. Uh, the higher you increase that, the more flex you're going to get, the more reactionary uh, movement is going to happen. You also have the strength and sway, and these two numbers uh, dictate how an object will react, whether it's mostly stiff, more like jello, or whether it's you know completely erratic or chaotic like the surface of the water. The lower these guys go, the more liquid looking things are going to get. So I'm actually going to set my strength to 0.1 and my sway to 0.1. Uh, we'll leave these guys checked uh, for right now. You've also got a drop down with three different algorithms to use. Uh, I like the Runjkuta, Runjkuta 4. Uh, I'm not sure how quite to say that, but that's all right. Uh, Euler works okay. Runjkuta is a little bit more accurate, so I kind of like to go uh, straight to that one. Uh, it might be a little slower sometimes, but uh, you know, it depends on what your computer can handle. Uh, the samples, the higher the samples, the better your simulation is going to look. Five will do us good for this simulation. Uh, and then we'll come down to the second set, which is our simple soft bodies. Uh, right now we've got a stretch of 5 uh, and a stiffness of 0 0.1. We want to raise the stiffness as much as that sounds strange for liquid. Uh, if we don't, our object will just kind of fall out of the world. We want it to stay put and only react like water. So if I, let's, let's say bump that stiffness up to about 7.0 uh, and that should hold it in place while these numbers up here are nice and low and all of it can react in a different way uh, to simulate liquid but it won't won't drop off the face of of the earth because uh, we've got nothing blocking it okay so from there we're gonna come down a little bit farther and we're gonna find the deflectors list click that add button and add in our U deflector and then we're going to come on back up and we need to adjust some of the, the weights and springs that are in this thing. Uh, just like a lot of modifiers, we've got some sub-objects. So if I, if I click on the little black plus sign up here, uh, we can open it up where we've got center, edge, vertices, and weights and springs. We want to select the weights and springs. Uh, and that'll show you how this is currently set uh, default with a fallout value, meaning the farther away from the center that we get, the less of a reaction we're going to have. And that's not quite how water works. In fact, uh, motion travels rather quickly and over a great distance. You drop a pebble in the middle of a giant lake and those ripples are going to reach all the way to the shore. So, what we want to do is select all of our weights and springs here. And I'm going to come down to the weights and painting settings and I'm going to mark absolute weight which means they're going to all be the same now. So no more of that uh, 
kind of a gradual fall off as we go. And then under vertex weight, I might just put in something pretty low, like a 0 0.1, uh, just to make sure that they're all set exactly the same. Okay, then when we're done, we'll click it again to unselect that sub-object weights and springs. And we are ready to click this wonderfully large button that says create simple soft body. Once we've done that, it has taken all of our settings and applied them to the reactionary dynamics of our animation here. So if I scrub down my timeline, and as this uh, sphere kind of passes through the surface, the entire thing reacts. Looks a little stiff, a little jagged, because we've only got 20 uh, segments in each side here. Uh, it's also calculating every time we play this back. So your computer might be going a little bit slow at this point. Uh, hopefully not too slow since we started out with a fairly low number of polygons. But what we can do is bake that animation into a cache file. Uh, we've got a modifier built into 3D Studio for that. Uh, there are a lot of them out there that are a little bit better, uh, like Super Mesh or something like that, that are plugins that you can buy that, uh, that work a lot better than our 3D Studio point cache. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and use the point cache for right now because it works pretty well for this. With our plane selected above the flex modifier, add the modifier that's called point cache. There it is. What we need, uh, if, if I'm smart, I'll give my plane a, a name. Uh, we'll call it water surface here instead of just plane 01. And I'm going to click the new button because we got to save a file out for this. I'll put it on my desktop. That's fine. It'll, uh, it'll give it a name, water surface. Uh, that works for me. And it'll, it'll save an XML file as the data for this cache. There's one I did a while ago just uh, for practice, apparently. It's still still there. Go ahead and hit Save. I'm just saving mine to my desktop. Save it wherever your, your project is uh, located so that uh, it's all together. You'll see that the watersurface.xml shows up as the cache file name. Down here, we've got some other uh, settings. Uh, do we want to save one file or one file per frame? Uh, one file per frame might be a little bit more accurate. It's also going to make 100 files since we have 100 frames. Uh, so you might want to watch that. You know, further simulations, things like uh, Fume Effects and other effects softwares, uh, one per frame is, is absolutely necessary. And some of those files can get up to the very large amounts of data in the gigs. Uh, this one should be fairly small, and I think one file will do us just fine. As is, we can go ahead and hit the record button. You'll notice it'll calculate through our samples, frames 0 through 100, uh, and it will save your frame. Once it's finished, it tells you the cache info and everything. We can come down here. We can actually do the disable modifiers below, which is actually going to turn off our flex modifier. Uh, you'll notice the little light bulb kind of goes grayed out. And now all of that movement is actually just recorded, which means our computer will be able to play it back uh, without calculations and things will go a lot faster from here on out for us. The last thing we want to do is above our point cache, let's add a turbo smooth or a mesh smooth modifier. Uh, we'll go with a turbo smooth and maybe two iterations, one iteration and once again we can go ahead and play our animation and the surface of our water is complete. All we need to do is add something that's actually holding the water, a box or a pool or something like that. Uh, give it a texture, some lights, and we are good to go. Uh, we can do something as simple as a box here. And I like to do almost out to the, to the edge there. Let's create a box for right now here. I'm sliding all over the place. Uh, let's go with 190, 190, and 100 height. Let's scratch that. Let's go with negative 100 height so it goes down. And I can center that thing out and maybe raise it uh, 10. Right click. I'm going to convert mine to an editable poly so that I can get rid of that top. And then maybe just add a shell modifier and increase the outer amount until it's beyond where my plane is. And now I've got liquid. We've got uh, a little bit of an issue here. All we've got to do is change uh, 
maybe even the inner amount here a little bit. That's not too bad actually. And uh, we want to make sure that uh, you know none of the edges kind of flip up on themselves. And now it'll look like uh, there's actual liquid here in sitting in this big uh, giant box. Apparently it needs to be a little higher. There we are. And there you go. All right.